TOEFL Junior Practice Test 1. The listening section has 42 questions. Follow along as you listen to the directions for the listening section. Directions In this section of the test, you will hear a teacher or other school staff members talking to students. Each talk is followed by one question. Choose the best answer to each question and mark the letter of the correct answer on your answer sheet. You will hear each talk only one time. Here is an example. Listen to a teacher speaking to a class. Today we have a new student joining our class. Her name is Sarita, and she just moved here with her family. I'd like you all to make Sarita feel welcome by showing her around the school and explaining how to find the gym and library. Remember that she doesn't know anyone here, so please be friendly. What does the teacher want the students to do? Now read the answer choices. The correct answer is A. Help a new classmate. Here is another example. Listen to a music teacher talking to a class. The next song I'll play will feature some very interesting instruments. I'll turn up the volume a little bit so you can hear these instruments in the background, so sit back and enjoy the music. When this piece is over, we will have a discussion about it. What will the students probably do next? Now read the answer choices. The correct answer is B. Listen to some music. Number 1. Listen to a school principal announcing to students. The school has a fleet of 13 buses which may be utilized by students for commuting to and from school. The buses have their fixed routes and will not go into narrow roads. Pupils then must board the bus at the given location on the main road. The school encourages availing of one-way bus services on a regular basis. Those interested may inquire at the school office. The system of immediate allotment of bus seats has now been introduced for all classes. What does the principal want the students to do? Number 2. Listen to a math teacher talking to a class. To start with, what happens if we want to take that three-fourths of something from before and add it to one-fourth of that something? Well, common sense and, as we'll thankfully see, math, tells us that we end up with one whole something. How about if we start with one whole something and subtract one-fourth of that something from it? Of course, we end up with three-fourths of whatever that something was we started with. What is the purpose of the talk? Number 3. Listen to a teacher speaking to a class. Class, we have a new student today. Please let me introduce you to Sarah Palin. She is the new, smart, pretty girl that just moved into the district. Everyone is nervous on the first day of school. New surroundings, new people, new classes, new everything. It is a lot to take in all at once. It is worse for Sarah Palin, though because she is going to have a much harder time fitting in than most people would. She is different from most people, and she hoped that they would accept her as easily as the kids at her other school had. What does the teacher want the students to do? Number 4 Listen to a teacher speaking to a class. Sarah Palin had just made her first friend Matthew. She'd barely been in the school for 20 minutes, and already things were going swimmingly. As it turned out, Sarah Palin was lucky enough to share every single one of her classes with Matthew. They would walk together and talk together, and Matthew made her feel at ease. She enjoyed his company, and he enjoyed hers. She seemed to take more notice of him than any of the other students. 
I wish her the best of luck. And a warning. You are the only new popular student once. It is impossible to tell how long it is going to last. If you think this extreme amount of goodwill is forever, you are wrong. What does the teacher want Sarah Palin to do? Number 5. Listen to an English teacher speaking to a class. Class, this lesson focuses on writing paragraphs to describe a sequence of events. In this case, we use a model volcano. You need to follow the rules below. Participate in creating a model volcano, photographing each step. Write sentences under each picture using sequential words, first, then, last, or first, second, third. Write a paragraph using the sentences created with topic and closing sentences. What is the teacher explaining? Number 6. Listen to a school principal announcing to students. The school does not normally encourage the use of carpool as a means of transport due to the inherent risks involved, including the possibility of a student getting lost. As carpool attendants take care of the students with parents' authorization, parents' guardians must submit a written declaration exempting the school from all accompanying hazards. It is often noticed that persons authorized to collect students for carpools do not do so on time. Hence, students often loiter in school and sometimes tend to slip out of the gate with others. In view of the grave consequences of such incidents, the school will be compelled to detain such students if they are not collected within 15 minutes of the scheduled time, and as for their collection by respective guardians. Which of the following is true? Number 7. Listen to a history teacher speaking to his class. This lesson focuses on a few key concepts of the Declaration of Independence, beginning with the phrase, all men are created equal. Students gain an appreciation of Thomas Jefferson's efforts to deal with the complex issues of equality and slavery in the Declaration of Independence. What is the purpose of the talk? Number 8. Listen to a culture teacher speaking to a class. Writers are influenced by their environment, including their family, community, lifestyle, or location. One such writer was Mark Twain. In this project, the learner will become familiar with and analyze life around Hannibal, Missouri, during the latter half of the 19th century, using various resources to determine what effects this location had on the writings of Mark Twain. The curriculum context will be within a lesson on Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Segments of this lesson might also be integrated into a study of Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. The lessons could be presented with introductory material prior to reading The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn or integrated while reading the novel. Even though these activities center on Mark Twain and his writings, they could easily be adapted to almost any author and his environment. What is the purpose of the talk? Number 9. Listen to an English teacher speaking to a class. Hi class, let's play a game to pass around different objects that vary in quality and forms. When I ask, what is this? I write the word what on the left side of the board. You need to write under what the noun. Then you begin to describe the object. Once again, I write describe on the right side of the board, 
you need to write under describe with an adjective. Remember? Now let's begin. What is the purpose of the talk? Number 10. Listen to a science teacher speaking to a class. Class, in this lesson, I need you to build a sample egg and place a bird figure inside the egg. Build an environment where it would be most likely be in the nest, or a hole, or the water using creative materials. Do a little research on the bird, where it lives, what it eats, how big it is, what type of environment does it thrive in, etc. Why is the teacher talking about the activity? Directions. Now you will hear some conversations. Each conversation is followed by three or more questions. Choose the best answer to each question and mark the letter of the correct answer on your answer sheet. You will hear each conversation only one time. Number 11. Questions 11 through 13. Listen to a conversation between a teacher and a student in the classroom. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what's the time now? It's 9.40 a.m., sir. At what time does the bell ring? The bell rings at 9.30 a.m. When should you come? I should have come before 9.30. Yes, but you came at 9.40. Sorry, sir. What is the reason? I missed the bus. You should have started earlier. My mother is ill. Did you do the household things? Yes, sir. Why doesn't your father do it? My father is a farmer. He has gone to the field early morning. Oh, I see. Hereafter, avoid coming late. Yes, sir. Now, answer the questions. 11. What happened to the girl? Twelve. What's wrong with the girl's mother? Thirteen. What will the teacher probably do next? Number 12. Questions 14 through 17. Listen to a conversation between a librarian and a student at the library. Can I help you? Yes, I am a bit confused. My sociology class is supposed to read a chapter in a book called Sociology and the Modern Age. According to the syllabus, the book is in the library, but I haven't been able to find it. Do you have your syllabus with you? May I see it? Yes, I put it in the front of my sociology notebook. Oh, here it is. Let me see. Oh, yes, your professor has placed this book on reserve. That means you cannot find it on the shelves in its usual place. You need to go to a special room called the reserve room. It's down the hall and to the right. I'm sorry, I still don't understand what you mean by on reserve. You see, your professor wants everyone in the class to read the chapter. If one student removes the book from the library, it is likely that none of the other students will have the opportunity to read it. So, your professor has ensured that all students have the opportunity to read it by placing it on reserve. So, will I be able to find this book? Yes. When a book is placed on reserve, a student can go to the reserve room and ask the reserve librarian for the book. The student can have the book for a few hours and he or she must read it in the library during that time. That way, the book stays in the library, and all students have a chance to read it. Okay, thank you. I understand now. Will there be anything else? No, I am on my way to the reserve room. Thanks again. Now, answer the questions. 14. What problem does the boy have?
Fifteen. What does reserve mean? Sixteen. Why did the professor place the book on reserve? Seventeen. What will the boy probably do next? Number thirteen. Questions eighteen through twenty one. Listen to a conversation between two friends at a bus stop. Good morning, Raoul. Good morning, Sira. I slept very late last night. Did you study? No, I watched cricket. I watched too. What a splendid match it was! It's a thrilling match too. I still can't believe India's victory. Indians deserve the victory. The victory is sheer luck. Don't tell like that. It is a hard-earned victory. How can you say that? What's the target for the Pakistan? Only two hundred and twenty-three. It's easily reachable, you know. Yeah, I agree with you. But they couldn't win. It's because of the mistake of batsmen. Why don't you say it is the skill of bowlers? The bowlers did not take the wicket. But they didn't concede a lot of runs. Yesterday, I only saw the captain's knock. Yes, I enjoyed his batting very much. But the fielding is very bad. Our players need more practice in fielding. Yeah, I agree with you. Now answer the questions. Eighteen. What did the boy do last night? Nineteen. What did the girl think of India's victory? Twenty. What did the boy think was the reason why the Pakistan lost? Twenty one. What agreement did they reach? Number fourteen. Questions twenty two through twenty five. Listen to a conversation between two friends at an exam center. Oh, now. Number fourteen. Questions twenty two through twenty five. Listen to a conversation between two friends at an exam center. Oh, now only I am peaceful. Were you agitated these days? Yes, I was. What about today's exam? Computer science is damn easy. Even one mark questions are very easy. I am worried about the total marks. I can't understand. I am worried about language paper. Didn't you do well? I did well. Then why did you worry? I am worried about total. Don't worry. You will get high marks. I feel synonyms are a little bit difficult in English. Yeah, I feel the same. Don't worry. God's grace is with us. Let us hope for the best. Let us enjoy the vacation. Now answer the questions. Twenty-two. What did they think of today's exam? Twenty-three. How did the girl feel? Twenty-four. What did they think of the language paper?
25. What will they probably do? Directions Now you will hear some talks and discussions about academic topics. Each talk or discussion is followed by four or more questions. Choose the best answer to each question and mark the letter of the correct answer on your answer sheet. You will hear each talk or discussion only one time. Number 15. Questions 26 through 29. Listen to a teacher talking in a history class. The Industrial Revolution began in England in the middle of the 18th century and spread to the rest of Europe and the United States in the early 19th century. This era changed the way people worked and lived. New machines were invented, and a large part of the population moved from the countryside to urban areas. Before the Industrial Revolution, people worked at home, on farms, or in small workshops. Making cloth was done entirely by hand. Cotton was spun to thread or yarn on a spinning wheel. In the 1700s, people began buying more and more goods, so textile traders began to look for faster and cheaper ways of producing clothes. The first spinning machine came up in the early 18th century, and by 1780, spinning was done mostly in new factories where workers gathered. New machines that were introduced during the Industrial Revolution needed more and more power to work. Up to the 18th century, England got most of its energy from water wheels that were run by the flow of rivers. In the 1760s, the Scottish engineer James Watt invented the steam engine. It was able to run factory machines and was powered by coal, which was Great Britain's primary raw material. The Industrial Revolution could not have developed without coal and iron. Coal was needed to make steam engines run and to produce iron. At the beginning of the 18th century, iron makers found a way to extract pure iron out of iron ore. They used coke, which was purer than coal, and burned hotter to melt the ore. As a result, the iron production increased, and by the early 1800s, enough iron was produced to make the goods that people needed, like machine frames, water pipes, rails, etc. Now, answer the questions. 26. What's the main idea of the talk? Twenty-seven. Why did the textile trader begin to look for faster and cheaper ways of producing clothes? Twenty-eight. What can be inferred according to the talk? 29. How did the people get power before the 18th century? 16. Questions 30 through 33. Now you will hear part of a discussion in a philosophy class. So you believe in God? Absolutely, sir. Is God good? Sure. Is God all-powerful? Yes. My brother died of cancer, even though he prayed to God to heal him. Most of us would attempt to help others who are ill, but God didn't. How is this God good then? Hmm? You can't answer, can you? Let's start again. Is God good? Yes. Is Satan good? No. Where does Satan come from? From God? That's right. Is there evil in this world? Yes. Evil is everywhere, isn't it? And God did make everything, correct? Yes. So who created evil? Is there sickness, hatred, ugliness? All these terrible things exist in the world, don't they? Yes, sir. So who created them? Science says you have five senses you use to identify and observe the world around you. Tell me, have you ever seen God? No, sir. Tell us if you have ever heard your God. No, sir. Have you ever felt your God? Tasted your God? Smelt your God? Have you ever had any sensory perception of God, for that matter? No, sir. 
I'm afraid I haven't. Yet you still believe in him? Yes. According to empirical, testable, demonstrable protocol, science says your God doesn't exist. What do you say to that? Nothing. I only have my faith. Yes, faith. And that is the problem science has. Now, answer the questions. 30. What's the purpose of the discussion between the professor and the student? Thirty-one. Why does the student always remain silent when she is asked? Thirty-two. Why does the student still believe in God even though he can't see him? 33. Why did the professor mention the five senses? 17. Questions 34 through 38. Now you will hear a biology teacher talking to a class. A coral is a structure made from millions of very small sea animals called polyps. Corals are very colorful and grow in many different sizes and shapes. They have a skeleton that is outside or inside its body. They can be soft, stony, black, thorny, and other types. Some look like feathers or fingers. Almost all corals live together in groups called colonies. Very big colonies are called reefs. A coral reef is an underwater mountain formed by the skeletons of corals. A coral reef has many bright colors and can grow for hundreds of years without being destroyed by the ocean. There are types of corals. Fringing reefs are near the coastline. They are usually the youngest reef forms. Barrier reefs are farther away from the shore. They form a wall between shallow water near the coast and the open sea. Some barrier reefs are very large. The longest is the 2,000-kilometer-long Great Barrier Reef on the eastern coast of Australia. Atolls are ring-shaped reefs. They form when an old volcano erupts and sinks into the sea. The reef grows up from the edge of the volcanoes with a lagoon forming in the middle. Most reefs need warm water to survive. They grow best in water that is at least between 16 and 20 degrees centigrade. Reefs also need enough sunlight to make food. Coral reefs can be found in the warm ocean waters of the Pacific and Indian Ocean, as well as the Caribbean Sea and the eastern coast of Central South America. They normally grow very slowly, not more than 10 centimeters a year. They can be found near the surface where they get enough sunlight. Now, answer the questions. 34. What's the main idea of the talk? 35. What is coral? 36. What is colony? 37. What can we learn from the talk about coral reef? 38. What is the common character of coral reefs? 18. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to part of the discussion in a science class. Look at this article. They take poor little mice and they deliberately give them cancer 
just so they can test out some new drugs. I bet if you get that cancer, you won't be so angry about those tests on those mice. Maybe that drug will be just the one to cure you. How else are they going to know? Huh. Why don't they test it in some other way, like in a test tube or something, or maybe on humans? They can say whether they agree to it or not, unlike those poor little mice. Well, I think they do all those things before the drug gets sold. They wouldn't use it on mice if they didn't think it might work, would they? And then they wouldn't give it to humans if they hadn't checked with mice that it doesn't do something else nasty. So the nasty stuff happens to mice. Hey, the mice don't get asked if they want to take that risk. Asking a mouse for permission? They can't do that. Mice just aren't smart enough. They whether they're smart or not has nothing to do with it. They can suffer, can't they? And it's wrong if any animal gets hurt. Yeah, right. Better lock up cats and feed them on porridge instead of mice. Suffering isn't good, but if the scientists don't do experiments on those mice, then many people with cancer are going to suffer. And we're much more important than mice. All mice can do is sniff around after cheese, but humans can do so much more. Yeah, well, human suffering is as important as mice's suffering, but I don't think it's any more important. If more mice than humans suffer, or if there are other ways to test drugs, then we shouldn't be testing on mice. There can't be other ways, can there? Otherwise, scientists would be using them. Anyway, who says that what works on mice will work on humans? Maybe, maybe. That's if they can be bothered to look for other ways. I bet they don't. I wouldn't know. Maybe, maybe not. But surely it's important to find out more about cancer and cancer drugs. A few mice that can't feel very much anyway aren't as important, are they? What if it was a choice between your pet mouse dying and your mum getting an incurable cancer? Which would you choose? I'd choose my mum, of course. But is the choice as black and white as that? Now answer the questions. Thirty-nine. What is the main idea of the discussion? Forty. Why is the girl so angry about the article? Forty one. Why do humans take tests on mice? Forty two. What may be the title for the article?